cloud. Here we go. All right. Started. Excellent. Uh, well, welcome everybody. This is the um, you know June twenty eighth board meeting. Um, we do not have a secretary right now, so I think we need a volunteer to take the meeting minutes. I just realized that. Sorry. Normally, Mike is our secretary, but he's not in attendance right now. He will join later. And I am volunteering. All right, thank you. Um, we have today um, Jacob, Tiffany, um, Vesa, Jeff, myself, Ryan as well, and we're missing uh, Mike, Steve, Samir, and Jeff. Some of them will hopefully join in a little bit, uh, but we have quorum so we can oh. proceed. Sorry, I'm here. Did you say me? I think I said Jeff. Sorry, Jeff is you, here. You said I was both here and not here. That's right. Yeah. Which might be true, but. Pamela <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and Donna. And Donna is right. All right, thanks for those clarifications. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to approve the um, meeting minutes from the April 22nd board meeting. Um, these have been distributed as part of the board package. Um, so you should all have been able to read those. Is there any corrections that anyone wants to make? There's no corrections. I think we can consider them approved. Great. I awesome. will record that in the governance tracker. And then um, the agenda for today is pretty packed. Um, there's a series of, of uh, operational updates. Um, I'll just give the floor to Megan for those. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I do have a few highlights I want to call out, but mostly I want to use our time together for staff to share um, updates and ask some, some questions um, for advice from the board on a few topics. And um, obviously, I think it's always just wonderful when we can get the board and staff collaborating. So, you know, moves a lot of things forward pretty quickly. Uh, but just a few highlights. Um, one of the things that we have seen over the last a uh, couple months is just a need for more, not just transparency into the Drupal Association, but clarity um, into what we do and how we do it. So we've been starting that effort, starting with um, working with the Finance Committee and getting um, financial information out there and trying to find the right way to to share information that tells a story that's meaningful to the community. And so we've started a blog series around the financials. And so we've kicked that off a few weeks ago. And we've added some more information and we are working with our um, virtual CFO, Summit CPA, to help us look at ways to pull our data together to tell these meaningful stories. And so you'll start seeing more insight coming out shortly. And um, uh, so I'm kind of excited about that work too. It's also starting to tell a nice story of our financial turnaround as well. So, uh, so be on the lookout for that and then um, one thing I just wanted to do a real shout out uh, since our last board meeting, we've had, uh, you know, the results in from DrupalCon Baltimore, which were really strong. And we announced that was our second largest um, DrupalCon. And Rachel's going to tell us more about, you know, all the details around that. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, our largest um, kind of revenue line in the financial um, in our financial story, so to speak. And it's a great story and it's really uh, helped us quite a bit. And I'm looking forward for Rachel to share more. The other thing too is the community discussions have concluded and I'm excited to have Whitney here today so that she can give an update to the board of what she heard from the community and what she's hearing the community uh, is saying should be next steps and how we could even support the community further and having them find um, that path forward. So thanks, Whitney, for being here. We're looking forward to having you share your thoughts. We also have a blog post out today. Uh, Whitney's going to do a webinar, so um, you can attend that, or we'll be promoting the recording of it as well. Um, <clears throat> some other highlights is that we uh, continue to work on promoting Drupal from the front page, and one of our focus recently has been those industry pages. Uh, we just expanded uh, and launched the healthcare page. 
so there's some really great case studies there and, and some good messaging that the community can use and uh, looking forward to, um, you know, just telling that story about the power of Drupal in healthcare. Uh, and then another highlight that is kind of a recent one is just around DrupalCon Vienna. We know that's coming up and what the team's really focused on right now, but we just have some nice indicators that it's going to be a, a really strong event, um, some early indicators, I should say. But the first two weeks of ticket sales were really positive. Um, it was around 200 tickets in the first two weeks. Uh, compared to Dublin, it was about 78 tickets in the same time period. So that's that's a nice way to start this off. And you know, you never really know exactly what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's because Rebecca did a DrupalCon Vienna t-shirt campaign. Um, and it also was tied to, you had to be a member of the Drupal Association to, um, uh, to get the t-shirt and, and enter into this um, campaign. So it also drove 40 new members. Um, so it's a nice uptick in our membership for June. Um, and then ses session submissions closed today. Uh, 24 hours out, we were ahead of where we were at the same time with DrupalCon Dublin. So that's always just a sign of engagement, not necessarily ticket sales, but just nice to see that there's strong engagement happening. So with that, um, you know, I'm always really proud of the staff, but I want to give them the floor to share their news and ask you questions. Um, and with that, I'm going to have Rachel take over the screen and she's got some slides. Great. Thanks, Megan. I will share my screen and rearrange. Can you see the DrupalCon Baltimore recap? Slide? Sure can. Okay. Uh, and when I'm presenting, I can't easily see faces. So please feel free to jump in and um, interrupt me with any questions or comments you have. And obviously I have a lot more information on the slides than what I'm gonna be presenting to you so that this doesn't take an hour and a half, uh, but feel free to come and uh, read the slides afterwards if there's anything that you're curious about in more depth. Um, all right, so overall DrupalCon Baltimore was a great success. Um, we saw higher attendance than uh, New Orleans, not only in our general conference tickets, particularly in one day ticket sales, um, but our training tickets went really well. Um, we also had stronger summit attendance and were able to introduce a new nonprofit summit, which had a good uh, first showing, which is exciting. Um, as far as our attendees uh, makeup, we didn't see too many shifts in our demographic breakdown, um, but basically we're still primarily focused on um, developers and front end developers. Uh, this question has changed a little bit over time. About a year or so ago, we updated all of our survey questions and registration data or registration questions so that the data would match both in uh, DrupalCon and Drupal.org where we're asking questions. So in New Orleans, we had it based on beginner, intermediate, and advanced, whereas now we're looking at things um, in a little bit more um, segmentation. Um, this slide is pretty interesting to me. Um, the Baltimore data is in green and the New Orleans data is in gray. And one of the things that um, is interesting to me is people are selecting fewer industries. So um, to me, that kind of shows that people are either specializing into fewer areas or in the past they were making place for more, um, more industries. But I thought that was kind of interesting to see that kind of across the board things were um, down and that people were selecting fewer. Um, this is the uh, a slide that uh, goes over our financials that Megan kind of alluded to earlier. Um, we put together a really um, conservative budget for DrupalCon Baltimore because it has such a big impact on the, the Drupal Association's um, overall finances. And we were able to not only hit our goal, but we were able to exceed our goal by almost $400,000 um, in positive net revenue, which is really exciting. Um, and that kind of came in through a variety of ways. We went over our sponsorship goal, which is exciting. Um, ticket sales came in stronger than our budget, and we were able to reduce um, expenses by $276,000 over the original budget. Um, compared to New Orleans, uh, it looks as though our net revenue or net income is a little bit less, but that's not actually the case. Um, we have since working with Summit CPA changed how we are looking at the um, formula for this. So for instance, in this uh, breakdown, New Orleans does not include staff, wages, benefits, or overhead in that model. So if we were to uh, reduce that out of there, we would really be looking at about 800,000 in net, net income. So we have increased the net income um, year over year, which is great. Um, looking at it a little bit more granularly, there's where our tickets uh, revenue um, breaks down and sponsorship revenue. 
Um, and our expenses, again, we um, came in quite a bit under our budget, which is really exciting. Um, many thanks to our friends at Groundswell Marketing because they did a really good job of working with our vendors to find um, uh, opportunities to find uh, not only savings, but we also signed a multi-year deal with um, Freeman for show decorating and um, AV, which saved us some money as well. Um, it was interesting to look back at DrupalCon uh, New Orleans uh, financial lessons learned and see that training demand is easing because this year training demand went gangbusters. Um, we blew through almost all of our capacity on training and had to add uh, trainers across the board. Um, and I think we ended up with um, about 80% of our trainings completely sold out, which is really exciting. Um, the summits are even more in demand, which is also great. Um, and our hotel room pickups are continuing to increase, which shows that we're kind of um, seeing more of that um, kind of business level um, attendee that's interested in um, going to the hotels in the block, which is fantastic. Um, again, I mentioned we were able to leverage some multi-year deals to save some um, uh, money. And then also uh, we got a lot of really great incentives from the city of Baltimore and the convention center for bringing our show to the city of Baltimore. So thanks to them, um, we were able to finish this um, event out strong from a financial perspective. Um, marketing, so here's some statistics on uh, some of the marketing activities that we had. Um, we worked on leveraging some channel partnerships and offered a sweepstakes um, to get people excited about coming to DrupalCon. Um, again, our photography team of volunteers did an amazing job taking pictures of the event. You can see them on Flickr. Uh, they, are, they make our event look really, really good, which is pretty cool. Um, and we leveraged a Drupal.org pane on the front page and industry pages to promote um, DrupalCon Baltimore. Um, email marketing moved to our second highest performing way uh, to interact with attendees. Um, we did do more online advertising this year. Um, we did that through Twitter and Perfect Audience. Um, and as you'll note there, our Perfect Audience retargeting was wildly unsuccessful, so we stopped early. Um, but the good news is, is that we were trying new things and uh, we were adjusting on the fly as things uh, were or were not uh, providing responses. Um, a big thank you to Paul Johnson and Alex for um, being our, our super volunteers on social media. Uh, they help us manage the, the channels and the lead up to an, an onsite at the event and uh, we could not do it without them. Um, some of the lessons that we learned from a marketing perspective were to continue to grow our audience. We need to break down barriers on conversion. Um, and, and some of that is related to audience targeting. Um, we had a, a lot of page views on the events website. Um, but again, people just were not, were not able to track all of those conversions as well as we would like to. Uh, we had a smaller marketing team and, and less content, uh, but we had more focus on a broad scale efforts that were working to make sure that people connected with DrupalCon and knew that it was an option out there for them. And the sweepstakes was a fun break um, for a new uh, DrupalCon devotee. So we were able to bring a new person to DrupalCon, which was pretty exciting. Um, and the, the Twitter ads on Drupal's uh, handle increased the audience to over 68,000 followers, um, which is pretty exciting to see. Um, training courses, again, like I mentioned, training uh, was extremely popular this year. Um, we have a couple of things that we're going to work on next year, including um, having people send uh, set up instructions for their machines a couple weeks ahead of the event so that there's less setup on site. Um, and looking for new audiences to serve with new learning areas. I think um, as D8 continues to mature, um, the demand for training is just going to keep um, increasing. Um, we offered a lot of industry summits on Monday. Um, the Business Summit, Higher Education Summit, and Community Summit are kind of longtime staples. I'm not going to read through all of the individual things, but I've got a summary at the end of, of lessons. So um, the government summit uh, was very popular and sold out, and we ran into quite a few issues of people working with, um, with government purchasing um, policies. Uh, and so one of the things that we want to look at for next year is finding ways to make um, the government summit and other opportunities for government employees easier to purchase. And, and some of that goes with providing extra information on the website that they need um, to complete purchase orders that other people may not. Um, we also introduced a nonprofit summit, um, which was really popular, and we were excited about uh, that. And 100% of the attendees were satisfied or very satisfied with the summit, which that's super exciting. Um, our highest attended session was on migration. And the highest rank uh, session goes to Tess about deep herding, so deployment beyond Git. Um, some general observations and feedback about the sessions um, with the speaker inclusion fund that we offered. We were able to set up some uh, baseline data on our diversity as a group. 
Um, we were able to increase the variety of speakers and add additional presentations by offering 25 minute sessions. Um, and the being human and hands on labs that we added to our programming uh, were really well received. Um, for next year, we want to continue to emphasize the importance of readable, readable slides. Um, so communicating tools on how to do that and reminding speakers of this, the um, room size and um, how well it can be read from the back of the room. Um, we want to continue to hone our, our session and room placement strategies to ensure we have accurate space for people. We had sessions um, be quite a bit more popular this year than we've seen in the past, which is great, um, but we did run into some traffic jams at points. Um, regarding sessions, we had more um, unique evaluations this year, which is wonderful because I know our speakers are always really hungry for that feedback and that data. And 88% um, of our sessions were scored over three and a half. Uh, out of five, which is really great. Uh, this year we worked to um, uh, do a little bit of a deeper dive on the inclusivity and diversity of our group of speakers. Um, and so uh, Amanda Gonzer worked really well uh, with the community to identify some questions that we could ask for people who are ses submitting session proposals. So we can kind of establish what our um, baseline data on that is, which is great. Um, we did some targeted outreach by our track team and the dd and i group um, to get the word out about this uh, fund so we offered funds for travel or lodging for people who self-identified as one or more of uh, the underrepresented groups that we offered um, it was an optional question so people did not have to answer it but we did find that quite a few people did answer that which is great we had 69 percent that answered the diversity question and 29% of our sessions that were submitted came from people who self-identified as uh, an underrepresented group. Um, so of the 163 sessions, we had 54 that were um, given by um, someone who self-identified as being from an underrepresented group. And of the six highest attended sessions, 83% um, uh, were given which is by an underrepresented group, which is great. And 50% of those higher, highest attended sessions were given by a first time DrupalCon speaker, which is really cool um, that we can use that in uh, recruiting new first time speakers um, going forward. So going forward, um, we wanna do more promotion around this fund. Um, we also wanna do more promotion um, to, out, to other local tech groups who will maybe have a lower barrier to attend uh, the conference. And uh, we want to have a little more lead time to reach out for, to those organizations before Call for Papers closes. Um, we're actively working on recruiting a more diverse uh, program team, and we want to create more tools for other people to help get the word out. So more um, pre-made tweets, blogs, invite words, that kind of thing for people that are allies of this program. Um, over 74% of the people who attended sprints found them useful or very useful, which is exciting. Um, people love the windows in the, the coder lounge throughout the week, which is great. Um, sprinting was uh, many people's favorite part of DrupalCon, which is really cool. Uh, we just wanted to say thank you to all the volunteers that make DrupalCon happen. Um, this is a screenshot from one of the program team uh, meetings. But there are literally hundreds of hours of um, volunteer time that goes into making DrupalCon happen. So we definitely could not do that without all of the very various uh, volunteers that contribute to the cause. Um, as far as the attendee survey goes, uh, the uh, things that were the most important reasons why people came to DrupalCon didn't really change much over last year. Neither did the activities in rank, so things pretty much stayed the same. Um, there were a lot of favorite moments at uh, DrupalCon. A lot of people loved the social events and the pre-note, um, being able to speak. Um, we heard a lot of really good feedback about sponsors in the exhibit hall, which was really exciting to see. Um, and a lot of people were really excited about the DD&I um, photo booth in their, in their part of the exhibit hall. Uh, things that people wanted more of, more, speaker, more space in the rooms for the sessions, which we heard loud and clear. Um, they, people really liked the longer lunch period. Although some people did feel that that meant that they were trying to cram in so many sessions they didn't have time to eat. Um, people wanted uh, an increase on diversity and um, inclusion at the event. And they wanted help uh, finding ways to connect with similar people. So finding people that are in similar um, work environments or similar places in their career or in similar industries. Our net promoter score was 31, um, which is a lower than what we would like and was a little surprising to us based on the feedback that we'd gotten about the event. And when we were talking about it as a team, we realized that ordinarily we do a big promotion at the end of the event about giving away free tickets to the next year's DrupalCon. And while we have that planned and have the names pulled to do that, we realized we forgot to promote it. So uh, the people that filled out the survey 
we we got quite a few uh, we got quite a bit less uh, completed surveys than what we've seen in the past and often they had something particularly that they wanted to communicate with us um, so it wasn't entirely surprising um, given the fact that we um, forgot to uh, really push it out that people should give back positive and negative feedback so um, overall from the survey migration was a hot topic um, people wanted to know more and they wanted even more content around that um, people really loved the longer lunches, but they were worried about missing a session and, and were confused about when they should eat uh, if they wanted to go to sessions all day long. Um, people want to continue to support um, increasing the diversity at DrupalCon and um, help with connecting to people. And the sessions were popular, which is great, but it led to some cramped rooms. Uh, overall, from a sponsorship perspective, we met our goal, which is really exciting. And we had 14 uh, first-time sponsors, which is um, even more exciting. Um, we also heard from quite a few sponsors that they had better conversations at DrupalCon this year, and they, they met a lot of uh, really new and interesting people, which was really encouraging for us to hear. Um, sponsors are continuing to learn from each other and work together, um, and we saw people kind of thinking of new ideas outside of the um, box, like substituting flowers for flyers um, or upgrading the tote bags for backpacks. Um, and we're also seeing that more sponsors are finding ways to supplement DrupalCon um, with their own complimentary programming or, or meetings um, throughout the week, which is really exciting. So overall, uh, we saw an increase in attendance, um, which is very cool, um, and kind of saw it across the board. Um, the DrupalCon's program needs continue to grow, which is a bit tough to manage with a reduced headcount at the Drupal Association, but we were still able to deliver a really excellent event. Um, we were really excited to launch an inclusion initiative with speakers and establish some baseline data on the diversity of our speaker base and session proposers. Um, we were really proud that we were able to uh, attain our revenue and expense goals and, and exceed that. Um, we were able to also grow online interaction on, on moving social ads to the Drupal handle rather than just the kind of segmented audiences on the Drupal Association and DrupalCon handle. And overall, our, our large attendance or our large audience um, blast communications are still important for impressions and awareness. Um, that tends to be the best way to connect with um, DrupalCon attendees. Um, and on top of all of that, we also launched a brand new um, visual identity for DrupalCon. So you can see the logo there on the top right. Um, going forward, we're, uh, our, our main takeaways is that Drupal 8 is maturing and so are our audience's needs. So um, the training sessions, technical case studies, and migration were really hot topics. Um, so we want to continue to work with the community and program leads to identify those topics uh, ahead of time and, and make sure that we're doing a really good job of marketing those um, to the attendees so that they can connect with the, the programming that we're offering. Um, we also need to assert some focus on DrupalCon's goals. So we're a smaller team internally and our event is continuing to expand. We keep adding more summits, we're adding more tracks, we're adding all sorts of great things, which is wonderful, um, but we, we want to clarify to our audience what our, what our purpose is and, and ensure that we're delivering the best experience to that purpose. Um, Monday's activities have gotten big, really big. So this year, by seeing more people excited about training and summits was really exciting, but it meant that it was a lot bigger in scope than what we've seen in the past. Um, so we need to alter some of our production prep um, and our internal operations in order to kind of accommodate that growth and, and find ways to better handle that crush of, of attendees and, on Monday morning. Um, we also want to continue to create more value for sponsors. So our audience composition is shifting and we heard really great feedback that people were having good conversations with people um, in the exhibit hall. And we just want to ensure that we're continuing to adjust our sales process and our, our, our sponsorship offerings in order to kind of um, accommodate those changing needs from our sponsors that are looking for more um, unique and one-on-one -on -one connections with our attendees. So that was me talking at you for quite a while. Does anyone have any questions? Rachel, thank you so much for, for doing this. I really appreciate these recaps that you do. Yeah. And I was wondering what it would take to get these linked from, we have a history page of all the DrupalCons on mm -hmm. D.O to like link to them so the people who don't get to hear that could kind of go back through and see it because like I was digging through all the board materials because someone had asked a question and I was like well I, I could probably figure out the answer to that but um, that's just because I have board access to the drive sure. <laughs> so <laughs> I love I love how much thought goes into all of these recaps so I was wondering what we could do yeah we definitely can do that I think it would just be a matter of consolidating the links and putting them online but that's that's absolutely something we can do. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I think it also helps uh, with uh, with our engaged community members who are curious where our community is going and the shifts and changes that it goes through over the years. Yeah, like this data really helps those people understand 
um, which could help them understand their own camp, their sure. own meetup, their own local geography of going like, oh, I had no idea training was so popular or such. Maybe we should think about doing something local uh, or step up our global training days or, or, or something like that. Like, oh, these summits are, uh, which I have a question on, these summits are very popular. Maybe I should think about doing something here. Um, so I have a question, but I, I don't yeah. know if I cut somebody off. No, go for it. Um, and so on, on Monday's um, activities, yeah. um, uh, which uh, yeah, as you know, Rachel, like even I got a little, um, uh, I got called in uh, from some Accenture things. They're like calling me up and they're like, yeah, we have some clients there for Monday. I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> you know, like you're here early. Um, was there any way we can, uh, have we learned ways of anticipating that? Or, I mean, can we, are we like, was that like a fluke, like a one-off Baltimore thing that we, like a lot of people came out because it was so close? Do we anticipate it to happen next year? Like did a lot of people come down for Monday and they just took the train down from Philly or New York or, or up from DC or whatever. And that's why it happened on Monday or. I think one thing that's happening is um, people are interested in connecting with other people in their industry and, and that those summits are really kind of interesty industry oriented other than nonprofit, which isn't technically an industry, but it is, they do have definitely have commonality. Yeah, that's an industry. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and I so, to, sorry, go ahead. Okay. I just want to do a time checks. So we need to keep moving. Yeah. Oh, um, so I think, I think that there's just becoming more awareness and I do think that we got some more local pull because it's, it's nearby and easy to get to on the Eastern seaboard. So I think it was a combination of, of those things. Okay. Yeah, Rachel, I uh, just want to say thank you. Um, you know, Drew Polk on Baltimore came, um, let's say, at a difficult time in the community. And, you know, I think you and the team, Amanda, and, and everyone really on the team um, knocked it out of the park. So thanks and a job extremely well done. Thank you, Dries. Thanks. Yeah, it's definitely a group effort. <laughs> a lot of people. I know, I know it is. <laughs> awesome. All right. To, uh, and to um, yeah, no thanks. And I'm just going to ask staff as you give updates. We had late starts. So I just want to make sure we leave time ten minutes at the end for um, community to ask questions as well. So, just um, if I speed you along, I, I'm sorry if I'm rushing you. No, and I, I think I'm presenting next, and then this is a very quick one. So um, if it's okay, I'll just jump right in. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to give a little update on the DrupalCon 2019 and 2020 RFP process. So essentially, our objective is to secure locations for DrupalCon that are well-suited for our programming and event needs, um, that we can ensure an event that's financially stable and, and sustainable for the Drupal Association and is exciting and um, um, in, something that our attendees and sponsors are, are eager to come to. Um, so internally, we work to reframe our RFP. We tried to make it a little bit more easier to read and um, address some high-level questions that are really important in the initial stages. So we broke out some more um, deeper dive information for later on in the process. Um, and we wanted to find a way to make sure that we could continue to compare um, cities kind of uh, against each other fairly, so apples to apples. Um, we released the RFP on May 16th um, by a, a blog post on Drupal.org and promoted it through social media and emails. And we did one-on-one -on -one outreach to um, a bunch of targeted cities that we've worked with in the past and have been building relationships with over the past like year or so. We also had some community members promoted it to their cities, which was great. Um, we had it open for two weeks and two days um, and continue to do some one-on-one -on -one outreach to um, some of those cities throughout that process. So it's a lot of um, going back and forth and answering questions to make sure that they have all the questions answered by the time the deadline is, is up. We received bids for two separate cons simultaneously. So we ended up with 14 proposals for 2019 and 15 proposals for 2020. Um, we filtered through those proposals um, for complete answers, making sure they answered all of our questions, making sure that the financials looked roughly in line with something that we could tolerate. Um, and looking for key deal breakers or red flags. So um, as of now, we've informed many of those participants um, that are no longer being considered that they're not being considered. And at this point, we're down to four proposals for 2019. Um, we're about to start site selection, or excuse me, site visits for that. And we're looking at six proposals for 2020. Um, so we're in the middle of doing city interviews for 2020, and we're about to do um, site, site visits for 2019. Um, at that point, this point, we're kind of narrowing it down our focus. So we're not, um, we're definitely not doing site visits for four cities and six cities. 
Um, and at this point, uh, we, we began getting more detailed quotes from the cities and um, doing a deeper dive on kind of some of the qualitative values of a destination, so things that aren't financially related, so how walkable is the city, how accessible is it, can our LGBTQ community come and feel safe and secure. Um, and we begin um, doing contract negotiations with the city, the convention center, and hotels. Um, and then eventually we pick our city and the contracts are signed and that's how we have our next DrupalCon location. Um, we get a lot of uh, questions and uh, mis I hear a lot of like kind of misconceptions about this process. Um, so clearing up a few of those, we did seek and receive the bids from destinations in Canada. Um, and we did request that cities not submit bids, and we have since rejected bids from um, places that had states with anti-LGBTQ legislation um, that was either enacted or pending. And I just want to be really clear that we gave direct feedback that that was the reason uh, why we wouldn't be able to bring our event there. Um, we also realize that we have lots and lots of people that are very curious about this process. And so we want to provide more information on the RFP process and how a DrupalCon site is selected. So we're working internally to find, figure out the best way to communicate that. So we're thinking it'll either be like a webcast or a series of blog posts that kind of gives a deeper dive on this because there are so many people that are interested in, in the minutia of how we, we pick a city and what our priorities are and how that process runs. So that is my very speedy update on 2019 and 2020. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions on that? No, but thank you. Go ahead. I have a quick question. Um, yeah. So on that end, I, I really appreciate the care we give to make sure that there that we take the conference to places where all of our attendees can feel welcome. Mm -hmm. um, are there anything? Is there anything we can do contractually to give us an out um, if we pick a city that doesn't have legislation pending that would be non-welcoming, but then ultimately does enact that between the time when we sign the contract and the time when the conference is? Like what can we do to protect ourselves so we don't end up in the same position we are now with Nashville? We can put outs into the contracts. The getting out of a contract is one piece of it, but then finding a new location is the other piece. And the truth of the matter is, is that um, it would it would probably be, need to be a minimum of 18 months before the event bef to be able to try and find another location. And even that would be extremely limited because of how big our conference is. We're already limited in the number of cities we can look at. Um, and then looking at it in a tight time frame of trying to find another option that has availability when we need it, it would be nearly impossible. So uh, being super honest, it would probably mostly be like, oh, we're not going to go there and we're just not going to have DrupalCon this year or something like that because it is that big of a lift. Um, it takes us about four to six months to fully vet cities. So it's, it's definitely not a quick, it wouldn't be a quick shift, but it is something, yes, contractually that we can um, build into the contract. Or even just accommodation, right? I mean, if if they were to pass regressive laws, then, you know, what other accommodation can they give us? You know, those kinds of things. Because I appreciate, like, this is probably more of a consideration for 2020, which is really far out, right? Mm -hmm. And 2019, that'd be great, right? Yeah, I think, I think there are things that we can include about kind of, um, th there's things that you can in include that involve relocating an event and they can cover expenses, not only just about any lost expenses to date, but also proactively covering things. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, you, you can include that. Thanks. Great. Okay, and I cut, if the board has more questions on any of these topics, please just send them my way. I'll make sure they get answered. I just want to make sure we keep moving this forward. Um, Rebecca has an update. One of the things we've been working on um, since DrupalCon New Orleans and, and the retreat there has been focusing on how do we unleash our data to do more to um, help people become more aware of the DA's programs and DrupalCon and um, and just better communicate with them. Uh, so Rebecca has been looking at that and uh, wants to talk to you about our privacy policy. Yeah, are you gonna share, Megan, or did you want me to? Why don't you go ahead and share? Okay. Um, hold on one second. It, um, it's signed you in. Share? One moment. It, uh, Google signed me out because I had an internet break. But, oh, I can um, just share. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So we are, um, we're looking at a few things in our privacy policy that we want to alter. Um, pretty small, but we know that the community will have a voice about it. Um, our 
current privacy policy has a few limitations on how we track visitors to the site through third-party technology um, and um, it's pretty specific in what we can do and we just want to broaden what um, our options are so you can switch um, so there is a paragraph in our privacy policy um, which talks about uh, the use using the service providers and to help us operate the site and provide high quality user experience to our visitors. What we'd like to add is say and promote information and events related to the Drupal project outside of Drupal.org. Um, so essentially what that means is that um, that rather than just tracking, using the trackers we already have to target audiences on other sites like Twitter or Facebook, we would be able to also track conversion of those users, which would, is the valuable data that we need and we're not able to do right now. Um, we would also add a bullet under that section um, just to be really clear with people. Um, we may use third-party tracking services to advertise and retarget and then um, provide links to those privacy policies on those social media platforms um, and perfect audience so that they can opt out if they'd like to. Um, we already provide the perfect audience privacy policy opt out on the site because we are using that already. Um, this would just sort of expand the ways in which we could use, use the data. Um, and so the next slide, is more of a question for you as the board um, as we look at changing this you know what are the conversations you think we need to have and with whom and um, what communications do we need to offer to the community and as we do this you know is it just a blog post or are there other avenues we need to go through and that is it so go ahead jacob <laughs> Have we had any conversations with anybody about this? Um, no, not yet. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> not since I've been here. I don't know if they had any um, before. There's probably just been processes as it was being created, right? Um, but we're just at a, a point where um, we're recognizing an opportunity. We know what others our peers are doing out there and we want to be say competitive as an event company <laughs> this is what you do but we also know we serve a community it's community data um yeah we're just starting frankly we want to have this conversation in a public forum to start this to show that you know the insight into this yeah i i mean i think i think the goals are 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 noble and 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 the right way way to go. I, I think some people are probably going to hang up on the third party services and want detail over like, well, what information is transferring over to there? Uh, the stuff that I fill out on my profile is that leaving Drupal.org? Is that now going to be in somebody else's system? When you say retargeting, am I going to be in their system in perpetuity now? Particularly right now, retargeting is such a hot topic in the IT world, and we all hate it. Everybody, yeah. no, there's no, you're not going to find a single person who's going to like that word. Yeah. Maybe, you, maybe like some marketer, but I mean, any developer that comes across a word is going to be like, oh, I hate you already. <laughs> so. <laughs> so all of those details are outlined in our privacy policy already yeah. around like the um, private information and what we do and don't share. And none of that will change. Yeah. Um, and so, and as you probably saw in, or as you did see in Rachel's, um, we stopped doing retargeting because it was wildly yeah. So I wouldn't hold your breath for that to happen again. <laughs> yeah. But you never know. So I think what I might do just for time's sake, because this is important to us that we move forward in the right way. If I could move it to an email and just get feedback from others. Um, I just wanted to say the the cons sort of starting. We don't think there are any cons there. I think there are some serious cons. Um, and along the lines of what Jacob said, uh, privacy and surveillance and tracking are really um, pressure points in an IT aware community. Um, and I think we really need to be mindful of that. That said, I think we need to do this, but the conversation is going to be critical um, and finding a way to, to do it sensitively with, you know, the, 
the downsides of um, tracking um, that's going on is um, is going to be um, important so we never get the minefield. Thank you. That's good to hear and good, good for us to be mindful of. And I'd also like to point out that Bessa um, put in a comment about are we general data protection regulation. So Bessa, I'm going to acknowledge your question. I'm going to do some research and I'm going to get you an answer. I have the same question as Vesa, by the way. There is some, just something you have to research, I think, because different countries have different regulations, and I think just use the right tools that support some of the international standards, I think, would be good. Yeah, Thanks, if, James. Like, like, if you could more. basically like meet the European standards first and then back to the U.S., you'll be in a much better place, because if you start if you start in our world, if you start with anything like, oh, well, it's allowed by the US regulation, I mean, that'll end your conversation in a heartbeat. But if you say, we're doing this and it's in line with like, say, the German regulation or the GDPR, then people will be like, oh, okay. Because those are much more, at least in the IT world, basically nobody trusts the US privacy regulations, right? But they do trust on the EU side. So never start your, con I, I, my, my advice is don't start any conversation saying, we're adhering to U.S. laws. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and the European laws are going to change next June on this, and that's a pretty major, major change. And, and you know, we don't need to discuss it now, but do check yeah. it. Thank the, the, you. Is, I would just lean towards that. About this in our, yeah. Yeah. We can talk about this, about this in our one-on-one. -on -one. Megan, I have, I have some, some more details about these things. Great, thank you. Yeah, glad we brought this up then. So. Um, we'll keep working through this, um, and thanks for all that advice, and um, we'll keep you posted. I'm going to just move this forward to the next um, update is Tim's just going to give a quick update on the infrastructure RFP. Yep. Um, I tried. I think I tried to share it at the same moment you did, so I think my screen is currently up. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, this will be a quick update. Um, uh, we gave an update back at uh, DrupalCon as well that we were in the middle of an infrastructure services RFP to find a vendor to support the Drupal Association engineering team with configuration management, infrastructure management, and all of that um, with the goal, if successful, of allowing internal staff to focus on um, efforts that are directly in service of the community while the partners handling the maintenance tasks and the underlying infrastructure tasks um, and kind of take that element off of our plates so that we can we can focus on mission uh, forward work um, so uh, we have a, a pretty significant um, uh, large infrastructure um, uh, there's a, a diagram here that I've shared before um, that I included so that folks looking at the slides later can take a peek um, and this was the timeline of our process that we've gone through. Our, our initial request for information was back in March. Um, we've done our uh, vetting and our internal decision-making process. Um, uh, we went through a process with um, internal staff, um, certain trusted volunteers. We've talked to the finance committee, various things. Um, and we do have a decision and we're in the final, literally today, in the final step of contract negotiation and getting ready to sign. Uh, with our new partner. So I'm not announcing the name quite yet, but we have a drafted blog post all ready to go. So hopefully that will be public um, before the end of the week, um, if not even the end of the day. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. And that's the quick, quick update. Um, basically, we're, um, we're through that process. We've got a vendor selection. We're just finalizing paperwork. So congratulations. Thank you very much. We're really excited about it on the uh, engineering side to get some support on the infrastructure side of things so that's great a lot of work went into that and a lot of care so um i'm really happy with where it, it landed i think it's the right solution and i'm looking forward to be able to speak more about that um when it gets announced uh so just to keep things moving i'd like to now um hand it over to whitney Whitney's going to give us an update on the community discussions. And then the last bit of business is um, Summit just joined us. Um, Jamie will give us a quick overview of April's financials, and then there will be uh, a motion to vote on uh, January through April financials, and then we'll just open it up for community questions. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. I am going to keep it very brief. 
we have completed the community discussions. We held seven of them at DrupalCon Baltimore, and we held seven online in the first two weeks of May. They were well attended, but less attended than we had expected and that we had capacity for. But the feedback, the findings were incredibly consistent from session to session. We had tremendous engagement, and I feel really confident about the, the quality of our findings. Um, to just give you a snapshot, not go into any detail at this moment, we identified shared needs that the community has that are not currently being met, particularly highlighted by recent events, but many of these needs have been not met to the greatest extent that they could be for some time. I'm going to list those out and move on, but I will be going into more detail in a webinar on July 6th at 11 a.m. Eastern. As Megan said earlier, we just published a blog post with a high-level overview of these findings and a link to register for that webinar for anyone who wants to hear more information, the recording of which, along with a transcription of the recording, will be posted as soon as that is completed. So the shared needs that we identified in order of frequency from most frequent to least are number one, awareness, two, participation, transparency, clarity, contribution, healing, trust, understanding, communication, connection, empowerment, process, and progress. I know I just laid a lot on you, but I will be going into much more detail on what we mean by these needs, how we're defining them, how we discovered that these were the needs. I'll be talking much more about the methodology for these, these sessions. And um, we also will be going into more detail in that webinar on the most commonly identified strategies that the community brought to the surface through these discussions for how to better meet these needs. Those range from gr better clarification on the responsibilities and the boundaries of leadership roles throughout the Drupal project. There's also a strong desire to have an official channel for communication so that all community decisions are being uh, noted in a single location that people can monitor. People want to see improved processes for community management and greater clarity on what those processes are and documentation of them. Easier access to that documentation on policies and procedures, but also greater documentation on what those leadership roles are and what the expectations are of them. And then most, la uh, most importantly, and um, really came out of pretty much every single discussion we held, is a desire for greater clarity and better communication around what is expected of Drupal community members our values as a community, ensuring that the code of conduct has the necessary um, supportive documents that outline how we expect people to behave uh, as representatives of Drupal in, in other spaces and as members of the community. And the additional expectations of those who are in leadership roles. There is a call for a governance summit to work through the details, to take the strategies that came from these community discussions and to figure out how to go about implementing them and really create a plan. Um, how this comes together, who is going to be participating in the governance summit, who should be facilitating it is still not defined. So we will be putting 
out a brief survey to the community that asks some questions around how they feel the governance summit should be organized so that this remains a community driven initiative and the Drupal Association will continue to provide support to whatever extent is possible to ensure that those things move forward with the structure and the resources that they need. But again, we're continuing to get the, the information on the how um, from the community directly. Again, I will be holding a webinar on Thursday, July 6th, 11 a.m. Eastern, um, that will be going through a whole presentation on these findings in great depth, and we will be posting the video and a transcript of the video shortly thereafter. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Whitney. Really excited to hear that webinar and share more of the details. And, and also just, just see, see the next steps. I'm eager to hear how the community wants to move forward with that governance summit. It's going to be really interesting to see how we create a space that is um, like, where should it be in the world, right? And how do we make it inclusive and make sure that someone who should be there can get there because maybe it's halfway across the world and it's an expensive airplane ticket. You know, there's just like a lot of things to, to think about. So I'm really eager to hear how the community wants to solve for all of that. Okay, so um, moving along, we have one last bit of business and just a few minutes to do it. So Jamie, I am so sorry to, to rush you, but uh, you are on to review April financials to give just an overview of our most recent financial statement, and then we'll do a motion to vote. Great, I will go as fast as I can. So um, with uh, financial statements, um, it's really important to understand how the calendar works with financial statements. Um, a lot of people understand like with the, um, a retail store, December, November, going into the Christmas season are really good time to look at financial statements for those two months because those are the best two months of the year. The same thing goes for Drupal. We're looking at these financial statements right after the best time of the year. So this is, this is your Christmas when it comes to looking at your financial statements. So um, the two main goals that Summit has for um, Drupal when it comes to um, financial statements is, is two simple goals. One is having enough cash in the bank. We feel that any company should have 10% to 30% of annualized revenue in the bank at any one time. This helps you cover um, any emergency expenses, but also helps you cover any um, slowdowns in business or any helps you make better decisions. The more cash you have in the bank, the easier it is to make a decision. So because of what I just mentioned, 60% um, of all of Drupal's revenue comes in through DrupalCon US. So because of that and how the calendar works, you're so dependent on one month and one event, we recommend Drupal being on the higher end of that, which is the 30%. So 30% of your annualized revenue is 1.4 million. As of the end of April, you guys are at 1.2 million, which is a great place to be. Again, this number will probably go down over the next couple of months as the expenses increase and the revenue doesn't come in as fast as it does in one month for the, uh, um, for the event. So good place to be right now, but at the end of the year, we do forecast it being quite a bit lower than this, but this is a good place to be right now. Um, net income, we forecast a net profit margin of 10%. Interesting, as a, as a not-for-profit, why would you want a 10% profit margin? This helps us build our cash reserve. It helps us run the business. It helps us make different decisions. Um, a lot of books nowadays say 10% is the new break-even, and that's, that's definitely the case. So um, you know, that's what we're talking about here is a 10% goal. Um, as of right now, we're well over that, but the forecast for the end of the year is to kind of hit that 10% target, which is a a really great place to be. And so just jumping over to the financials real quick, you can see right now where we're at in terms of this is the summarized financial statements where we're at year to date is at a 41% profit, which is 1.1 million on a $2.6 million of revenue, which is 41%. Now, like I said, a lot of that is because DrupalCon Baltimore just finished. And in our memo here, we kind of talk about how successful DrupalCon Baltimore it was, which is a great thing to see. You can see this is our original forecast when we forecast it, we only forecast $2 million of revenue with a 33% gross profit, but we ended with $2.1 million of revenue and a 41% gross profit. So just a great event that um, came through and is really going to help the rest of the year. So um, you can see that's why we're at the spike right there. But as you see the next couple of months, this amount will definitely go down as the um, other events, and other costs come in. So um, 
talk as fast as I could. Um, hopefully, that if there's anything else, I mean, we can go into more details there. But that's really the summarized position of where the financial statements are at right now, and we can look at more details. But then also the cash that shows up here, where we're at in terms of total cash, 1.2 million, but also 1.4 million dollars of liquidity there. Great. Did I miss anything, Megan? Sorry, I couldn't get my cursor to move to unmute myself. That, that that's great. Um, and uh, I appreciate you going through that quickly. And I know the, the boards had the financials in advance, and hopefully they had a chance to, to kind of digest it a bit too. Um, and if it's okay, I think I need to hand it back to Dries to do a motion to vote. Yeah, can we get a motion from somebody? I move that we, uh, um, this is Donna, I'm a member of the Finance Committee, um, we, we've also looked over these, so I move that we accept the financials. I second. Awesome. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the financials. Um, if you are in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone not in favor? Just oh. Ryan, that was me. Jeff, that seconded. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Great. I'll All right. In the governance tracker. Okay. So, thank you. That was a very full board meeting. I just want to open it up to the community members on the line. Um, you have a chat. It's actually. Um, you want to chat? Use the chat to type in your questions if you have any at this time. We could go that way. I can also promote you to panel. I just don't want to, your video would show up and I don't want to put you on the spot. Okay, is there a way that we can see who's in the chat? I, uh, yeah, I, if you go to the Q&A tab. Oh, uh, no, okay. not the Q&A tab, the participants tab. The participants tab, oh, I see and that, yeah, there's, there's five viewers. Ah, and so, very cool. welcome Aaron Crossman and David Hernandez as community members. I also see Amanda, Delana, and Elise, who are DA, uh, who are DA staff. So, hello to you guys too. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask the board? Can they, are they can they can type in there? Or? Yeah, I, yeah. I, they can. Okay. They should I've, be able to use a chat function or use okay. the Q&A function. All right, David, surely you've got a question for us, David. All right, well, I'm then going to assume there are no questions. However, at any time, shoot me an email with your questions. I'm happy to answer them, but I'm glad we had people seen oh. it. And oh, I see. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, David. I, I didn't realize I was off mute. <laughs> I'm learning in the Zoom apparently. <laughs> Technology. I just somehow David realized has, I'm an old man. I like what David is David has Zoom? said um, he's being polite today in the uh, in the Q and A questions. So thank you, uh, David. Of course, you know you can reach out to any of us at any time. I think we should interpret that as a question and and answer it. I mean, I David, I don't think you're being polite. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Aaron, Aaron, if you can hear us, did you have any questions? No, I'm fine. <laughs> Thank so you. So he, he did ask a question about asking uh, info about the fine. Uh, see more info about the financial chart charts online. Great, and um, a lot of that's going in the what we just approved, correct? Yeah, so David, what we share are the income statement, balance sheet, um, and we have those, uh, we put those with the meeting minutes, so I'm going to do a blog post and all that information will go out. There's more detail that can, uh, we're working on a type of uh, report that tells a more complete story, like where's the money coming from, where is it going, how, how are the programs doing overall, like margin analysis, things like that. So we're working with Summit to create the right document that I think will probably be the easiest to read in the community because not everyone reads financial statements. Um, so we're working on that and you'll see that kind of information coming pretty soon as well. Awesome. Well, we have reached the end of the time that we had allocated for this and we've also reached the end of the agenda so unless there is more things um 
more questions or more business to discuss. Um, if there's nothing else, I think we should adjourn the uh, public part of the board meeting and switch to the, um, the private board meeting. Great. I just want to say thank you to staff for preparing all that great information. It's amazing what we do with less than 20 people. <laughs> and Whitney and Jamie, thank you so much for joining us and sharing um, your information as well. You're definitely part of the team. Thanks, Jamie and Whitney. Thanks thank for you. having me. See you uh, soon. Great Bye. job, everyone. Good. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Do we have a different line for the exec session or do we stay on this? Uh, we just stay on this. Let me, I'm going to just shift gears. Um, I noticed Mike's here. Oh yeah. Okay. Give me one minute and I can get them in. in You're the still recording, uh, Megan. Yeah. Right. Probably stop the recording. I'm going to do that.